here in Kekokek finishing up a video. And I'm right by the lock and dam number 19, just at the bottom of it. And this guy went through. He's probably on his way to Florida. Maybe I'll catch up with him. I doubt it. I don't catch up with a lot of people at five and a half miles an hour. Leaving our little spot, Kekokek, Iowa. I think we're in Missouri now. I don't really feel different. Not yet. The show me state. This is Lock and Dam 20. Kind of snuck up on us here. I really wasn't thinking Lock and Dam today. But here we are. We're trying to make longer days here. 35, 40 miles. Pretty slow in the whole scheme of things, but we gotta keep moving. We were doing 20 mile a day until a week or so ago. Should be about an hour, I'd say. All right, I'll, I'll stay put for an hour. Thank you, sir. We're gonna try to go to this beach over here. Kill an hour, walk the beagle. I'll try to show you how quick it comes up, guys. We'll run out of depth real quick. I aimed for this log. It's one little trick, you know, to think of when you're coming up to a beach. Something to tie to, where you don't have to throw the anchor. Just tie to this big log here. There's Lock and Dam 20 right there. We're gonna go walk around for an hour or so. Oh, sniffy sniff. Found something stinky. I think it's time for a cold bath. Another absolutely gorgeous day. This old grain silo up over the hill here. Let's go check it out. Come on, Beagle. The power of beavers. Look at that. A beaver took down this giant oak tree. Amazing. Probably nothing too exciting. Let me try to show you. You guys see these tracks? I think they're deer, deer tracks. And Wavy's just going nuts. She picked up on it and she's just, her nose is like catching every one of them. <laughs> Sometimes I feel bad. Wavy doesn't get to live the life that she was kind of born and bred to live. She just wants to track stuff constantly. She's an absolute slave to her nose. That's just the way the scent breeds are. <clears throat> you know. But what can I do? I take it for walks. That's all I can do. <clears throat> Very few people live in a place where you can just let a beagle roam free. <clears throat> I've heard, you know, I've met a lot of people over the years who have had, I'm going to turn the phone uh, while we have the time here. I'll tell another quick wavy story. So, uh, this was probably, I don't know, three years ago now. I was visiting with a friend of mine. I haven't seen her in a long time, but a friend. She lives in the UP and it was winter and I was, I was home in the winter. And we went up to a little town up the Keweenaw and had some dinner and caught up and it was snowing outside. It was, you know, pretty cold. And we were walking around the little town, and of course I had wavy like I always do, and some deer were just walking around town like some of these UP towns have. You know, there's like almost pet deers in a way. Pet deer. <laughs> and the leash, she was pulling on it, she was screaming, and the leash came out of my hand. And she just went darting into the snow in the darkness, chasing these deer into the woods. And I just started yelling and screaming at her. I was like running after her as fast as I could. Wavy, stop! And she's just burp, 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 burp. <coughs> and finally, 
her leash got caught on something like a branch or something and she was just straining at it you know she would have chased these deer to wisconsin oh now you know why i never let her off the leash let's go check out this little pond if we can these little ponds sometimes are just loaded with like monster sunnies monster bass because they don't get fished you'll find these in the dakotas just these little ponds that have been kind of you know protected in a way because they're on a farmer's property and sometimes that property gets sold to like a developer and if you just happen to kind of notice that happening sometimes you can sneak in there and you can fish them I, I did that once I had a girlfriend who her brother was a land developer and he kind of cued me in he's like there's a pond right over here and <laughs> there's gonna be houses around it in a couple months but if you go fish it you're gonna probably catch some big fish and I did and I got some monsters I caught the biggest sunny I think I've ever caught in my life it was like a mutant it would be fun to fish this with the little spot. Yeah. This is probably enough south too that it doesn't freeze out. Well, there's the boat that the lockmaster was talking to. He was right behind me. And he gets priority. Uh, Lockmaster 20, this is the Pleasure Craft heading south. I've decided I'm just going to stay on this beach tonight and I'll pass through in the morning. I'm just letting you know, sir. You said you're going to pass through in the morning? Yes, sir. I'm just going to camp on this beach a little bit north of you tonight and uh, and I'll just pass by in the morning. Roger, I'll let the morning crew know. Thank you, sir. I'll see you tomorrow. It's getting to be like mid, late afternoon. It gets dark about 6 now. And... I can't be certain that there would be something this nice on the other side of the dam, so we're just gonna stay here tonight. Here's our little makeshift camp. So I double tied the barge back in front. Really good. Got my plank out. Got my chair out. Got some dead weight. Noisy dead weight. We're going to install this little handle that we found a couple nights ago in that little riverside spot. I think I figured out where we're going to put it. Right here. Now when I don't have the plank out and I'm jumping on the boat, I find myself always kind of grabbing this with like one finger and just pulling myself up on this side. Now I can just grab for that and I'll have to find another one for the other side. Just start looking on the beaches I think I'm gonna show you guys this there is all sorts of carp I'm pretty sure it's carp jumping usually you can't really catch a fish jumping unless you're lucky but there's so many out there and I found some carp carcasses on the beach big ones too Getting into carp country. Well, good morning, guys and gals. <coughs> hey, you shush. So we got ourselves into a little pickle here. I'm going to turn the phone around and show you. So the river level dropped last night. I just called the lock master. The lock is just right over there. That's lock 20. Really nice fella. I thought they were going to just laugh at me or chastise me or something. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh no, it happens. You're not the first one. And, and they might. Uh, He's going to do some calls and see if Keokuk's going to release some water and maybe raise the level. He's going to do some searching. Um, and they might send over a boat or some shovels or something. So, yeah, I, I, you're probably wondering. I'm not really showing you what's going on here, huh? She's barely floating in the very back. And she's on the hard in the front starboard 
I mean, we lost a good couple feet here last night, and he said that was is unusual. It's just kind of like bad luck, you know. I really wasn't thinking about tides or anything like that. So it could be worse. I mean, it's not. It's it's kind of half floating. So I'm gonna break out my little army shovel and start digging, and I'll wait for a call back and. I'll keep you posted. Stay tuned, guys. Okay, guys, a little update. So I was out there doing a little digging, and she's she's beached just a little too much for me to, to get her loose, and plus the mud's probably suctioning down a little too. But I did talk to the lock master again. He called back, just the lock right back over here. And he's thought that they are going to release some more water from Keokek. Ke Keokek? <laughs> I'll get that one of these days. Um, which would be great. But when he finds out for sure, he's going to call me back. And he said, I mean, they're, they're so helpful, which just is amazing. I love it. Um, he said, even if they don't release water, him and his guys will come over here and maybe try to pull me off with their boat or do some shoveling or something. So one way or another, we're going to get off of here. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, there's no point in worrying. So I'm going to make some breakfast and we'll just hold tight and see what happens. So stay tuned. Well, all we can do is wait. <laughs> I did a little bit of digging and a little bit of prying with some driftwood and nothing's gonna get nothing's gonna get her to budge. So we're gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for the pool to come back up, or if that doesn't happen, the fellas over at lock twenty might come over and bring a boat or bring some shovels or bring some muscle. Maybe all three, who knows. But I'm not going to worry. Even though winter's coming. <laughs> it's not here today. So we're going to walk this beach and see what happens. Keep waiting. I'll give you an idea of how much the water level dropped. I would say it was about right here last night when we got here. I'll go back and look at the footage and see if I can figure it out. But... I remember kind of having to go in the water or pretty close to it to get around this log here. So it dropped a lot. I guess it could happen to anybody. I'm trying not to feel too foolish. Learning something. If this ends up being our final resting place, I never get that boat off the beach. I'll just live here, I guess, all winter. We'll fish in that little pond. Maybe we'll push the scooter over this hill. Take this little road to town. Canton, I think is the nearest one. Go to the grocery store. Could probably use a wood stove though. I mean, eventually we'll run out of propane. Hopefully there's a place to fill it up so we don't freeze this winter on the banks of the Mississippi. <clears throat> Maybe I can just buy a wood stove and I did bring some tools, so and the solar panels probably keep us in power all, all winter long. Just burn driftwood. They gotta raise it back up in spring, right? We thought we were going to Florida, but oh well. Things don't always go to plan. Oh, maybe I could put a little roof on that silo. Move into that. Can always eat the beagle. Things get really hard. But it tastes very good. Spoiled meat. Probably tastes like dollar store treats. Gross. You could find me some rabbits. She smells something. It's going nuts out here. <laughs> My phone started ringing, and it was the lock master there at 20. And he said that they're going to close two gates at 20 here, but that won't do much. But they're going to open some up at Keokuk. And it might take a while for it to get down here, but it will raise the pool a little bit. And I really don't need much. I can tell. I mean, it's probably less than half of the hull is, you know, sitting in the mud there, the, the sand in the mud. 
I'd say another, I don't know, I just take a guess, but it's not going to take much. I mean, the boat only drafts about 10, 11 inches, so we'll get her one way or another. He said if it doesn't, you know, get me off by the end of the day, you know, we'll start thinking about some other stuff, but they sound really helpful, and and I'm not the first one that this has happened to, so we got everything we need. I can always eat the beagle. Just make a fire on the beach. Put her on a stick. Just kind of slowly turn her. <laughs> That's the boat that they were talking about. It's going to come through around 10. Let's put a piece of driftwood right on the water line here. Then we can look out and watch it and see if it's coming up. Put it right right there this is what one of the wing dams looks like when the water levels low and if you look right out there there's some disturbance in the water and that wing dam goes out probably to the can to the red can out there Oh, she's going to be floating soon. Oh, let's go check on the, the stick. I don't know. Maybe it's wishful thinking, but I think it's come up a little bit. What are you looking at? All right, going to check again. This is the kind of times when you say and remind yourself, some people have real problems. <laughs> oh, she's definitely coming up. Look at that. I stuck that right at the edge, like about, I don't know, an hour ago. Lockmaster, Lock and Dam 20, this is the house boat. Uh, do you have a moment? Yeah, I just wanted to let you know, I do see the water level coming up. It's going slow, and I, I have no doubt we're going to be floating again sometime soon. So thank you for whatever you did there. Yeah, it's come up a couple of times. Uh, just let us know what you want to do. want to try and pull it or something while we have a chance. Yeah, I think she's actually going to be floating. It's a, it's a flat bottom boat. It's really easy, so I'm pretty sure I can just push her off here soon, and then I'll start heading your direction. Thank you, sir. I'll be in touch. Thanks. I love it. I love it. I love it. And here's the thing. I'm a worrier. I, I've always been a worrier. And I haven't been worried at all. I don't know if it's just the stress levels just coming down and being out here on the river or getting old, older, you know, all the work that I try to do to be conscious and uh, improve, I guess, you know state of mind but it's whatever all the combination of those things have worked i haven't i got this morning i saw that it was on the hard and i just said we're gonna get off <laughs> this happened to us on the original shanty boat beagle adventure i'll put a little link to it uh we were in panama the backside of panama city i think and the tide went out we were tied up to a tree and and the shanty beagle sat on the hard for i don't know half a day or so and it just slowly came back up kind of like it's doing here today and we floated again so Maybe that was just good practice. So, anyways, guys, stay tuned. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to be floating soon. Look at that. It wouldn't have been the perfect solution, but if I was going to beach it and this was a possibility of happening, I could have just had it nose up, so the nose coming up to the beach, then the tail would have been hanging out in at least a couple feet of water, even at that low level there. And it probably still would have been really hard to get off. I would have had to wait for some water to come up, but we would already be floating now. So the fact that I turned it sideways, perpendicular to the beach, is pretty much our downfall for this one. So, But that's okay. Some people have real problems. 
<laughs> I'll mention this too, guys. So here's something I am smart about. I always kick the, you know, I kick the motor up almost as far as it'll go um, in case something like this happens, you know, because the last thing you want is your prop and your lower unit kind of being torqued in the mud, you know, with the weight of the boat when it's kind of half floating. So when I'm in these really shallow situations, even anchored, um, I always kick the motor up at least a little bit higher than the depth of the hull. So you want to go for a walk before we float off the sandbar? Hey, don't drink so much. It's going to drop the depth. Look at all these beautiful waves coming in. Filling up the pool again. All we need is like just a, I don't know, another six inches or so. Push this motor right off. Now I set that stick. You saw it. I was right at the edge. Now it's all the way starting to fill up these little indentations. Remember, it wasn't even coming up to this side on the front. Now it's filling up. to our little spot we won't be doing that again it reminds me of that line in that red hot chili pepper song I never worry now that is a lie <laughs> well I never worry <laughs> and that's a lie but we didn't worry that much this time I had a feeling we're gonna float again Let's carry on. Well, this is kind of a bummer. Ever since we hit Missouri, it was basically right on the Iowa-Missouri line. I must not have the chip, uh, the detailed chip in this. And it just, now it will it doesn't show me any of the depths or where the cans are at or the wing dams or anything. So I'm gonna have to start being a little more careful and just relying on this a little less. Pleasure Craft heading south, uh, Lock and Dam 20. This is the houseboat. I was able to push myself off the beach. We're not heading your way. I'm sorry if that was for me. I didn't catch that, sir. Oh, I was able to push myself off the beach, um, and I'm just heading your way whenever you're ready. Yep, be great for you. Awesome, thank you. All right. Thank you very much, guys. You guys have a good rest of the day and a good winter. Hey, you bet your cap. You guys do the same. You do the same. I'm safe on down. <laughs>